Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 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 Hello, is anyone there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, this is Robert Doucette. Uh For some reason, my Zoom teams, I don't think anyone can hear me. We can hear you. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> Sarah, are you there? I'm Rachel, sorry. Good morning, Chair. Sorry, my Teams isn't working, so I had to call into the conference. No, we can hear you, and the meeting slash preliminary hearing has actually started recording. So if you want to start the meeting. Sure, I'll, I'll get off this and Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Robert Doucette. I am the chair of the Bernalillo County Code of Conduct Review Board. Um, so I call this meeting to order. Roll call. Um, District 1, are you here? Good morning, everybody. Sorry, everybody, I'm having some technical difficulties. Uh, my name is Robert G. Set. I'm going to call this meeting to order. District 1, are you here? Yes, Paul Chavez. Thank you, Paul. District 2. Alternate for District 2. Okay. District 3. Yes, Martha Brown, I'm on the phone. Thank you, Ms. Brown. District 4, I'm here. District 5. Yes, I'm here, Kevin Sanders. I am on the phone for audio. I'm on Teams without sound, so I'm hoping this works. Yeah, I'm on the same thing, Kevin. So thank yeah. you. Okay. We have a quorum. Has everyone had a chance to look at the agenda? Yes. Yes. Any yes. additions, additions to the agenda? No. Uh, I have uh, one question or clarification. I believe we have already approved the September minutes. I think the October minutes would be the outstanding ones. Yeah, that's next, sir. Okay, thank you. Nope. All right, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any nays? Okay, motion approves. Uh, the next item is the review and approval of the October 14th, 2022 minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review and look at the minutes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any additions, deletions? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve of the minutes for October 14th? So moved. Thank you. Is 
there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. <clears throat> aye. Any opposed say nay, motion carries. Okay, the fifth thing we're um, on our agenda is the consideration of scheduling of evidentiary hearing for our sworn complaint. So before we go, I just want to read our ordinance, which is at page four, before we start. Um, complainants and respondents in this representative, representative shall at the request of the board address the board at the preliminary hearing, which is what we're at. Such presentation shall be limited to discussion of whether the complaint contains sufficient factual allegations to support a finding that a violation of the ordinance occurred. No testimony shall be accepted and no argument about the accuracy of the facts alleged in the complaint shall be accepted in the hearing. So I just wanted to remind everybody that's on this call and on this team meeting uh, what we're looking for at this preliminary hearing. So uh, unless legal tells me I'm wrong, I believe the complainant is the first to speak. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if I may just briefly, um, since we are keeping minutes of this, if anyone who speaks, if they could please identify themselves just so we can make sure that we have a proper uh, record and a, a proper set of minutes. If, if people could just do that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for um, reminding me of that. So, um, Mr. Peterson, are you on the call or online, sir? Yes, I am on the call and I am being represented, represented by Sarah Berger, my attorney. Okay. That's great, sir. Um, I'll turn the floor over to you and your representative. Please go ahead. Good morning, uh, Chair Doucette, members of the board. My name is Sarah Berger and I am an attorney representing the complainant Carl Peterson in this matter. Uh, Mr. Peterson has alleged violations of the Bernalillo County Code of Conduct Ordinance based on the following facts, um, as you pointed out, each of, my, each of which must be accepted as true for the purposes of this preliminary hearing. And the facts are that Vanessa Allerid lobbies the commission on behalf of San Alina's developer. Um, Ms. Allerid is married to state representative, now Senator uh, Maestas. On June 2nd of this year, while Commissioner Piscotti was a candidate for election to the commission, she received from Ms. Allerid a political contribution valued at $5,000. Um, that contribution was not timely reported to the Secretary of State. And these facts, if accepted as true, constitute violations of the Code of Conduct Ordinance. I'll just refer to it as the ordinance going forward in the following ways. First, the question is, is Ms. Allered a restricted donor? Um, a restricted donor, according to the, uh, the ordinance, includes a person or entity who seeks official action by an elected official. And for purposes of this complaint, official actions include, but are not limited to the decisions regarding legislation, approval of per permits or development plans, or any other action or decision that is discretionary with an elected official. I just wanna say as further support that this code includes lobbyists as restricted donors, the board could look to New Mexico state law um, as how lobbyists are defined and how restricted donors are defined. Um, the seeking official action language is very similar to the State Lobbyist Regulation Act that defines lobbyist as someone who attempts to influence a decision related to any matter before the legislature, also approval by the governor and official acts. Um, restricted donor under the New Mexico Gift Act includes, among other definitions, the agent of a person who will be affected financially by the performance or non-performance of the donee's uh, official duty, 
and a lobbyist or a client of a lobbyist with respect to matters within the donor's jurisdiction. So because Ms. Allard's contribution uh, was from a restricted donor and it was not lawful and not reported in accordance with the election code, it is not exempted from the ordinance's definition of gift. As a gift, the donation exceeds the $100 limit imposed on restricted donors, and the gift, regardless of value, was not disclosed. In addition, regardless of whether you deem this to be a gift or not, the $5,000 contribution exceeds the $1,000 campaign contribution limit imposed on restricted donors by the ordinance. And then finally, the complaint alleges that commissioners must not engage in improper influence over any county governmental decisions, and commissioners are required to disclose potential conflicts of interest and must disqualify themselves from both substantive discussions or votes when a potential conflict of interest is present. Mr. Peterson has pled sufficient facts to support a finding that violations of the ordinance occurred. As such, Mr. Peterson respectfully requests that this board accept the complaint for an evidentiary hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, is the response anyone representative the respondent on the call oh yeah i'm sorry i didn't i didn't hear what I'm, you said um yeah this is charlene piscotti i'm present go ahead oh go ahead commissioner the floor is yours now okay um I guess in regards to the facts, um, I I actually find the facts to be um, untrue. Um, the first of all, the five thousand dollars it never came through my account, and as soon as I heard about that, um, that Ms. Ellery had um, sponsored a mailer postcard for me almost immediately um, as soon as I got that notice I posted it to my um, campaign finance report and so I I'm not in violation with the Secretary of State's office and um, and as I understand that's not even relevant in this case because that Secretary of State is separate from the county um code but i just wanted to make that clear that as soon as i heard about that i did post it and that that was on july 7th and um i heard about that through my the person working on my campaign i thought i thought i was going to get a bill from her but instead i got a message from her saying you need to post this on your um campaign finance account and um, contrary to the the flattering remark of Carl Peterson that I'm a a savvy or seasoned politician, that is not true. I'm a mental health therapist, but I did consult with somebody who is familiar with campaign finance law, who said that that donation of the postcard because it didn't go through me at all I like I said I was expecting to get a bill from my campaign worker that that should have just been counted as an independent expenditure and never gone through my campaign finance report so um, I I totally dispute that I had any wrongdoing in that um, I did exactly what I <coughs> I was told to do it exactly like within the hour of receiving that message, I posted it. And so um, I, I do dispute that. As far as Ms. Ellery being a, a restricted donor and me having a conflict of interest, in cases where um, the topic of Santa Lena came up, you can check my record. I, <laughs> I do not have a pattern of supporting Santa Lena. I've, um, in fact, there was one case where I voted against it, and um, the the landfill 
topic, which was then the next came up the, in the next meeting after um, that campaign contribution. And I did not attend that meeting. I recused myself from that meeting. So there was definitely no conflict of interest with Ms. Allaried after that, after I learned of that campaign um, donation of her sponsoring the postcard. So I did not even attend that meeting. I absolutely recused myself. Um, and so uh, so there's that. And I guess you know two two other things. Um, this complaint came to me the day before the vote for the appointment um, for that Senate seat. And so, First of all, Mo Maestas was an applicant and he did everything right that an applicant should do. You know, I always call applicants before the the meeting and talk with them. Um, he never did anything for me ever. He never gave me one thin dime or in any way um, did anything for me personally or as far as I know, even for my district. His district is way on the other side of the county from my district. So there was never anything from him and he was the applicant. So to say, it, it seems really convoluted to say that his wife, who's a lobbyist for, for Wall, had something to do with lobbying for his appointment, which by the way, is still at this point, it's an unpaid position. It's not like he, is making any money off of that position. And if anybody wants to ask me why I voted for him and not the other popular candidate, I'm more than happy to talk to them and tell them why um, I stick by my decision. But I think the overall conclusion I wanna make, because in, in the paperwork, the um, relief requested would be for me to recuse myself from the discussion and debate about that appointment. Um, like I said, this complaint came to me the day before that vote. And I think that um, for me to have recused myself would have just set a bad precedent that anyone can make an accusation and and I don't even know the right word to use here, but ask, demand, threaten an elected official to not do their job without even a preliminary hearing, that is just, that's just wrong. And so I felt like I had to just do my job and go to that meeting and put, my, put in my vote and, um, and I guess let the process play out because um, it just seemed like the timing of this complaint was very odd. So I I don't know how these preliminary hearings go. Uh, you know, are there any other things I need to address here? Um, Commissioner, this is Robert Tuset. No, as I read before we started, um, what we're looking for here. Um, after you're done, we as the board will discuss what we want to do. We we have two different avenues. So is there anything you want to add? Um, I I guess, you know, I just want to add, I I'm doing my best. Um, definitely after that heartbreaking loss of my primary. Um, you know, maybe I just wasn't on top of things, maybe I should have questioned that donation. And, you know, it, it like I said, it seems like it should not even have gone through my account as an independent expenditure. Um, but, you know, there was just, I, I got into this job as a therapist who just wanted to serve her community in a bigger way. And so I, I just have no, I'm not a political insider. I'm not making any money off of this or getting any personal gain. I just wanted to serve my community. So um, I guess that's all I want to say. I never intended any wrongdoing. I don't think I did. I've, I think I've always been trying to do things with the best heart and the best integrity. So um, 
I guess thank you for hearing me out. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, um, my understanding now we'll open it up to the board. Um, so any board member have any questions? So, okay, here are none. I think we as a board and our attorney at the county, John will tell me if I'm wrong and please tell me if I am. We have, we either schedule an event a hearing, an evidentiary hearing, or we dismiss this. So, either way, I, I, yes, please. Yes. Yeah, it appears there are four possible outcomes from a preliminary hearing. Uh, those are dismissing the complaint, holding it in, an, in abeyance for a criminal investigation, referring to the county for investigation, and scheduling an evidentiary hearing. If we go the evidentiary hearing route, which based on uh, the party's testimony today, sounds like there is material dispute, uh, we would then set deadlines for an answer by respondent, clarification by complainant, and deadlines for submission of things like witness lists and exhibits uh, for that evidentiary hearing, keeping in mind that we have to resolve the whole thing within 90 days of the complaint, which I believe, seeing that it's marked November 10, that would put us at February 8th for a final resolution. Thank you for the clarification that there's four different roads. So any of the board members, um, anyone that you want to talk about or explore? I, I'll put a motion to conduct an evidentiary, evidentiary hearing on this matter. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, before I ask for a vote, I will explain why. I, I agree with the county attorney. I think there's enough dispute of what the facts could be or are. And if we do this hearing, I think we'll have uh, everything will be put in front of us, and we as the the Burnley of County Code of Conduct Review Board will be able to have it in front of us. So there's a motion and there's a second. Is there any other discussion on this motion? Okay, hearing none. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, is there any board members, any discussion? Well, I heard some. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I would mention, Mr. Chair, is that the board will be required to issue a preliminary report based on the outcome of today's meeting. Okay, yes, sir, we'll do that. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries um, for the, res the complainant and the respondent um, by the county ordinance, we have a timeline, as the county attorney said, we'll send that to you with the deadlines and times of when this meeting will take place. Um, sir, John, did I miss anything? No, sir, I believe and, um, everything's in order, sir. And <clears throat> along with Ms. Florence, I will put together that scheduling order and we'll get that out. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Um, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Still moved. Second. Second. Okay. All those say, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yay. Thank you everybody for your time. Um, we'll see. We'll see and talk to everyone soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.